Mexico reeling from the effects of the drug war and many current and past leaders of that and other Latin American countries now calling for the decriminalization of marijuana as one possible way to mitigate the violence. My next guest has long held that point of view. He's the former Minnesota governor, Navy SEAL, and professional wrestler whose independent political philosophy is eloquently captured in his best-selling Don't Start the Revolution Without Me, just updated and published in paperback. Jesse Ventura joins me. Hi, Governor. Geraldo. Great to see you. Great to see you again. So uh, I know you've held the view on uh, decriminalization. Why and how do you support it and how do you defend it well, against parents who are so concerned? Well, it's simple. You, you, you either read and study history or you're destined to repeat it, Geraldo. We're repeating it. This is the identical same thing to the prohibition of alcohol. The minute alcohol was prohibited, that's what created all these border towns like Tijuana, Nueva Laredo, and all these towns, Nogales, where they're having all the trouble, because all the U.S. people that wanted to drink in those days ran across the border and drank in Mexico. Well, that brought the prostitution. It brought the other behavioral problems down there. The simple thing is this. When you decrypt, when, when you prohibit something. It doesn't mean it's going away. It just means it's going to be run by criminals now because it's not above board. While the criminals eventually get so wealthy, they become more powerful than the government, which is a great deal of what's happening in Mexico right now. They have more guns, I might add, they get them from the U.S. because it's illegal to own a gun in Mexico. Uh, they got the guns, they got the power, they got the money. By decriminalizing, they're out of business. They have to find something new. It's not rocket scientists, Geraldo. It just takes politicians with some courage. Politicians who aren't afraid of, of who aren't worried about jeopardizing their reelection and simply do what's right. Decriminalization is the way out of this. And for parents who are worried about it, parent. And that'll be the answer to the problem. We, I'll put it this way. Are people getting shot over alcohol and tobacco? Not anymore. And yet both of those drugs are worse than marijuana. I've never met someone who smokes pot and goes home and beats their wife up. I've met a lot of people that drink and do that. And I myself was an addict to Copenhagen, chewing tobacco. One of the most difficult things I ever quit in my life. Well, marijuana is not addictive. Not physically, it can be psychologically, but it is not a physical addiction like nicotine. And we allow those two drugs. Why wouldn't we allow marijuana? And then if you take it to the medicinal end, we allow doctors to give us morphine, but they can't give us pot. What's wrong with this picture? In a brief minute I have left, I have to ask you about what you think of the president speaking at Notre Dame today. You know, there were uh, some anti-abortion activists who had... Uh, had promised to disrupt the festivities, et cetera. That didn't happen. Uh, he handled it, it seemed, pretty gracefully. But what do you think about the whole flap? Well, there's always going to be a flap, Geraldo. You, I learned that as governor. There's no gray area, not in abortion. It's black, it's white, and the two shall not mix. And it's always going to be that way. So you're, you're always going to have protesters who are going to be against abortion. You're likewise are going to have protesters who are going to say that it's a woman's right to have her own choice and that it's not government's job to step in and do that. What about the president's main message? Re exactly agreeing with you, but saying we have to be civil both sides. To oh, each other. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's look at a few things. I'll tell you what I'd like to talk about. Quickly.